Now, as I stated on the previous slide, what we really want to know is, is the difference between the two groups reliable? Essentially, is it right that we have two different fitted regression lines, or can they be collapsed into one? And so you saw that they have the exact same slope. The only difference is, is where they're starting from with regard to the y-intercept. So we want to essentially see, is the difference there reliable, right? And we can set that up with a null hypothesis test, a t-test specifically of the individual estimated coefficient for our dummy variable. And if we were to do so, we would construct our null hypothesis as beta 2 equals, I'll let you think about this for a second, 0, very simply. And our alternate would just be that there is some relationship, positive or negative, between the dummy variable age and our outcome support for the war. We will generate our test statistic simply by taking our estimate for beta 2 minus 0, since that's our null, over the standard error of beta 2. From the table, you could have calculated this simply as 0.05 over 0.03, and that's approximately 1.6 repeating. Now, if you remember as well from the previous lecture that we want to do a p or a two-tailed probability test to get a p-value right because we're looking for the probability mass in both ends of the reference distribution, in this case a t-distribution. So since we're using a t-distribution, remember that the degrees of freedom are calculated as n minus 3 in this case, right? It's n minus k minus 1, and we have two variables. So it's n minus 3. If we plug that into R, we'd get something approximately around 0.08. And we would make what conclusion? We would say that the null was not rejected. And we would say that it's not rejected because the p-value is not less than our critical threshold of 0.05. It's very close, but it's not below it. And you'll see why this is kind of a silly arbitrary rule, right? There's no reason why 0.06 is significant versus 0.08 versus 0.05. It's just some arbitrary threshold that we've set up. So what I typically like to do is not necessarily to report p-values, or if you do, just don't necessarily say statistically significant. Let the reader make an informed decision as to whether or not they believe that is a statistically reliable result. Some literatures are fine with critical values of 0.1. Some are much stricter and need something of 0.001 or 0.01. So it really varies. And I think the important thing is just to give your audience all of the information that they need in order to make their own decisions. Now, because our p-value was not below our critical threshold and we did not reject the null hypothesis, this shows that there isn't really any difference between the two age groups when we account for party ID. So we really only need to estimate one line. And another way of saying is that given party ID, there's no statistical evidence of a significant difference in support for the war between these two different age groups. Now, does this mean that we shouldn't include age in our regression model? And I'll let you think about this for a second. The answer is no, we should still think about including age in our regression model, but the way that we've constructed the linear relationship between these two groups may not necessarily be statistically reliable. There may not be a relationship between these two categories because quite frankly, they're quite wide and arbitrary categories, right? We just cut it down the middle. Maybe if we had more meaningful, informed categories that comprised age groups that maybe have similar experiences and similar opinions, then we may find that there is, you know, a preference for 65-year-olds and over versus everybody else, or maybe 18 to 30, a specifically younger cr crowd might feel a different way than the general population. But or we could use a continuous variable if we, again, thought that it, there was a linear 
relationship between the two. Or we could account for nonlinear relationships with cubes or splines, and we'll talk about that later. But just because something's not reliable the way that you've measured it the first way doesn't necessarily mean that you've done it the best way, right? Like there may be a nonlinear relationship here that you need to account for. And just giving up because you know the first model wasn't reliable um, isn't usually a good strategy. However, I wouldn't say that you should just go fishing for results by trying to see what you know gives you something statistically reliable. Again, the best way to be informed about what to include in your model is always based on your theory, right? So we would have a good theory for why people over the age of 65 versus everybody else would have a different opinion about supporting the war. To conclude this por portion of the module where we're just going to be talking about binary dummy variables and then I'll move on to multiple categories, I want to quickly make sure that everybody understands a key point and I want you to be able to calculate the mean predicted value of y given a certain set of covariates. So in this case, I'm asking you how to make the correct calculation for the predicted value of supporting the war for an individual who has age zero, so they're young, and they are moderate, so their party ID equals four. And I'll give you the options, let you think about it for a second, and then I'll walk through one by one, talking about why one is correct and the others are incorrect. So our first is, in order to predict the mean outcome for an individual who is 18 to 53 and a party ID equal to four moderate is negative 0 0.03 plus 0 0.05. Your second option is negative 0 0.03 plus 0 0.0, or sorry, 0.14 times party ID plus 0 0.05. C, negative 0 0.03 times party ID, and last, negative 0 0.03 plus 0 0.14 times party ID. So let's start off with the correct answer. First, the way that I would start thinking about this is that one, we know age is supposed to be equal to zero. So we can essentially cross off our last coefficient of 0 0.05 right away. And the thing that we're left with then, and I haven't actually stated here what I wanted moderate to be right in any of the equations but we would just be multiplying it by party id so we take our estimated coefficient for party id times our value so four plus negative 0 0.03 which is approximately 53 percent support 